Little secret. Have you ever fantasized about killing your boss? Or maybe a, a co-worker? I know I have. Yes. <laughs> Where was I going with this? Right. Nine to Five is the story of three women who come close to fulfilling that fantasy. It's a silly film of sexism, workplace politics, and genuine friendship. Jane Fonda. Lily Tomlin. And Dolly Parton. Nine to Five. I think I was a little young when I first saw this movie and didn't quite understand what it was about. My parents allowed me to watch several comedies that weren't very age-appropriate, which is odd since I was never allowed to watch horror, but that's for another time. What hooks me immediately is the on-screen talent of our three leads. The trio complements each other and shows a few personalities one can find in the workplace. We've got to do something. He can't just treat people like that. <laughs> do. What's to do? Quit? Well, I can't quit. It's the same all over anyway. Well, look, couldn't we just all get together and and complain? <laughs> complain to who? Let's face it, we are in a pink collar ghetto. Let's have another drink. My favorite character overall is the acerbic and ambitious Violet Newstead, played by the comedic genius of Lily Tomlin. And I have the bad back to prove it. Margaret, anything serious? Nothing so far. Uh -huh, well, Margaret, please, Roz is on my case. Sorry. I remember when he was just a management trainee. In fact, I'm the one who trained him. What's he like? <sighs> Did you know that this was Dolly's feature film debut? It's amazing how her personality could shine through as Dora Lee Rhodes, a truly lovely spirit. This is Judy Burnley. Judy's gonna be working over in my section, Dora Lee Rhodes. Hi, Judy, nice to meet you. How do you do? Hope everybody's been treating you real friendly and showing you around. I'm not as familiar with Jane Fonda's work, but I like how she injects Judy Burnley with a kind of reserved grace. They're the last. You, uh, you sign them and then you give them to your lawyer. Okay. H how are things with you? Everything's fine. Terrific. I got a job. Oh. I'm a, I'm a secretary. And I would be remiss not to mention Dabney Coleman and Elizabeth Wilson. They're so oily as Franklin Hart Jr. and Roz that I'm all the more satisfied when they ultimately lose. Looting the police? Maybe they knew you were hiding. Just, just pulling your leg. I don't think so. In any event, I think you should be aware of that coffee business. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I can use that to some advantage. The only real downside is the tone overall. The first half is a borderline thriller, and apparently the original script was supposed to be much darker, where the women actually do try to kill their boss. Then it shifts into a farce, and I enjoy both sides, as the script utilizes everyone's comedic style, but as a result, the pacing can kinda slow itself down, and the movie meanders about as we wait for the inventory information to arrive. Which is worthwhile when Hart is freed and attempts to exact revenge until he unexpectedly meets with the big boss. So why do I like this movie? Well, visually speaking, I love the use of color in the picture. The settings are shades of silver and gray, brown and burgundy, while the actors are all wearing colors like, in addition to blues, reds, yellows, and pinks. Violet especially stands out to me because she is wearing almost all blue, or all red throughout the whole picture. To me, it's a visual representation of her power in any given scene. When she's at her shakiest, she's in Prussian or Midnight Blues, but always has red lipstick or jewelry. And when she's at her strongest, she adopts more cardinal and Venetian shades in her wardrobe, a symbol of her ambition and experience at the company. I like how Dora Lee is incorporated with cornflower blues and daisy yellows, emblematic of her western roots. I got a gun out there in my purse, and up to now I've been forgiven and forgetting because of the way I was brought up, but I'll tell you one thing, if you ever say another word about me or make another indecent proposal, I'm gonna get that gun of mine, and I'm gonna change you from a rooster to a hen with one shot. <laughs> Don't think I can't do it! Shit. And Judy, 
the most conservative of the three, has a more traditional look, which also includes shades of azure, carnation, and white. I like how this represents the various ways women present themselves as individuals while still being distinctly feminine. And this is a stark contrast to someone like, say, Roz, who looks severe in her charcoal suits. It illustrates her allegiance with heart. Though I would also argue that such a color scheme is meant to be attributed to age, since Missy Hart isn't really dressed in light colors, but she's no less feminine than the rest. And this motif of color continues when we see the offices and how somber it appears, but then in the finale, a woman's touch has made it personable and livable. I also enjoy the simple use of editing in relation to exposition and what the audience knows versus what the characters know. Like in this scene here, when the women believe they've poisoned Hart and rush to inform each other. We know first when Violet finds out. Oh my god! Oh my god! <sighs> then when she runs to tell Judy in the elevator. Hurry! What's the matter? Something terrible's happened! You... The door closes, and we cut to when they're getting off and Judy has been brought up to speed make such a stupid mistake. I thought it was skinny and sweet. Here, look at the box. They are identical, except for the little skull and crossbones on the label. Crazy, someone's gonna see you. It keeps the pace going, and that's what I want. I cannot stand clunky or repetitive exposition. Finally, we must talk about the message, which simply put, is the treatment of women in the workplace, which was the crux of the production. My challenge as one of the producers was to in a short amount of time, educate Colin Higgins on everything that I had learned about secretaries. So the organization, which was called the Association of, of Office Workers, 925, in Cleveland. I flew him to Cleveland, and we went there, and my friend organized about, about 40 women of all shapes and sizes and races. And <clears throat> they sat in a circle, and he asked to go around and have each of the women tell their stories, which they did. And when that was over, the genius, he said, do any of you ever fantasize what you'd like to do to your boss? Oh my lord. And I mean, some of the things we couldn't put in the movie. <laughs> and that's all well and good. But I want to look at the relationship of women in the workplace. As we can see in the first act, the women are standoffish to each other, suspicious, condescending, and competitive. Granted, Roz is clearly not a friend. I hadn't heard from you. Did you get my memo? I did, Roz. I tore right through it. Good. You know we must step clamp down hard on any signs of unionization. Hmm. Oh, here comes Mr. Hart with Mr. Hinkle. But Violet and Judy aren't very kind to Doralee either. She does everything else for him. She's too tired. They've been in conference together all morning. <laughs> what did Margaret mean about Doralee? Well, rumor has it that uh, she is banging the boss. She and Mr. Hart? Mm -hmm. I think that's awful. Well, live and let live. Though, frankly, I credit her with more brains, certainly more taste. That's how my husband left. He was having an affair with his secretary. Well, I don't think Hart's going to leave his wife. She's been too good a meal ticket all these years. Besides, she's bananas. She adores him, if you can imagine. Until they later realized she was never sleeping with Hart, yet by the end of the movie, they still don't bother to tell his wife what's been happening all based on her not being smart enough. I bring this up because later down the line, I'll be examining several favorite films that heavily feature women and their relationships with each other. Often there's this idea that if women are behaving negatively towards their peers, it's usually because of the patriarchy or something. You look really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty? Oh, I don't know. But I think 9 to 5 was smart to touch on this idea that women don't necessarily need men to be spiteful towards each other, a nuance that I think is lacking in this current narrative climate. I'm not saying all women need to be fighting with each other all the time, and I'm glad the film ends with them successful together, but if this movie ever gets remade, I hope that nuance is kept. I want to see the women be friendly, successful, and confident, but I'd also like to show that they're still flawed characters. Thank you for watching.